Uh, all right, I'd like to call the board supervisor to the order or board supervising the, the joint meeting to order. Um, as always, let's do the pledge of allegiance and make sure it's Madison Home, which was a system facility, so they're out of business and they want to sell the single family home. Questions for Ligon on this case? Comments? Right. Hey, it looks pretty straightforward to me. Do we, do we go to public? Or? Uh, oh, I'm. We haven't. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Probably profusely. Right. To the public. <laughs> Give me the phone. All right, back to the board. Oh, my God. I've gotten out of practice too, Mr. Chairman. I, I move to approve subdivision request 06-20-10. Second. Motion made and seconded. Further discussion? Aaron and I are on favor signify by saying the like. Aye. Aye. Case number S-6-20-11, subdivision request by Diane Atkins, executor of the Madeline Tatum Carter Estate. Subdivide an existing 158.8 acre parcel, creating three new lot parcels with residue parcel. The subject parcel is zoned to A1 agriculture, and the four parcels, including residue, would contain 13 acres, 14.6 acres, 5.8 acres, and 122.2 acres. The subject parcel is located on the LE Road Route 607 and is identified as Madison County Tax Map as 50 35. Ligon? Yes, um, if you look at the uh, subdivision of this, um, so we're taking this one and making it four, three new lots with the residual. Do not as a third uh, interest here, here. And then there's a shared interest with three lots here. This is the part of the two acres. And grain fields, I guess, are. Sometimes in the next five years, I don't know how good those letters are. In five years, um, I guess to build a home site. Um, this gentleman here, I know you, you know you're at the planning commission. Uh, he uses this Briarwood, uh, Briarwood Lane, but to, to get to his house now. They're 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 uh, looking at entering here, but Briarwood goes over this land right here. So I guess this is what 
people that are part of the dominant If you go to school, you can see that they are, uh, you know, you can cross over their land, and I assume that this is a, a right way to use it. Sometimes they don't. It could just be a prescriptive right way to use it. I don't know if you not which one it is, but I mean, they too could use this, I and mean, obviously it goes over the land, but again, this is what their proposed entrance is. And I don't think there's any uh, multiple people who use this right away. Several houses back to it that uses right away. Can I approach the um, screen? Sure. All right. Um, my name is Jacob and Griffith. Um, I am, um, how we get here instead. We come off 607 on the Bentley Mountain Road, which is a state road. We go into uh, Briar Lane. We get over to Briarwood Lane here. My house is um, way back at the very bottom we saw the screen here. Um, we come up here, Briarwood Lane. I go all the way back down. Uh, you see with the word up there, Gunter. I won't pass that all the way there to the very, very end. Up there where it says Gunter. So mine. We follow it all the way up here, down to here. That's how far down it is. Um, all the way up here and on down. Um, when I bought this property, it was very specific there in the deed uh, that I we had we were deeded uh, right away, uh, all the way up there. Um, checking, and we also checked. We had long. It was a, a very long, tedious stay with through the lawyers. And um, they checked with the other homeowners, and they all had deeded they did their deeds also, that they were all deeded right away, all the way back through there. So as far as the legalities there of having the right of way, that's, that's a no-brainer. The one thing that concerns me is that that road there is a, it's a single lane road, a single lane. There's no, it's not two ways, it's not a wide thing, it's, 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 a, it's a private road. We maintain it. If somebody, if we meet somebody on the road, one of us has got to, like in the old days, well, somebody's got to pull off. So what worries me is that um, if somebody here on this property or somebody here decides to just inadvertently or wishes to make their own little back door exit out, Onto this road here. So, okay, they've got an entrance here, a property entrance in here, and there's supposed to be a property entrance uh, up here someplace. I don't go high. Up here? Or someplace. I, I couldn't quite figure that one out. But they decide, well, heck, we'll just decide to go out here. Well, and we're coming up the road, in, enter, entering or exiting there. Well, what's to say that we don't bump into them? You know, I mean, we don't. We don't ride ATVs up and down the road. We keep the kids from doing that. Um, or ride go karts or anything like that. But like I said, we live on one lane road. You know, I mean, we, I mean, what's the, the chance of something like that happening? And who's to say that on a weekend somebody just doesn't make an entrance onto that road or whatever? I take care of the road. We all take funds up every year and we gravel that road ourselves. I buy the, 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 um, the fuel. I went for my own tractor, and I, I you know, I, I grade the road every couple of weeks, you know, to make sure it's all taken care of. The whole length of the road from my house or Mrs. Leak's house, who is farther than I am, all the way up to um, up to the state road. So that that is one concern as far as what people do, or, or this young lady um, uh, selling the land and, and you know, and prospering and. and you know, in doing whatever, uh, providing the land, well, God bless her, great, you know, that's, that's wonderful. But, um, what, you know, that, that concerns me is, is to the usage of, of, our, of the road, you know, so, um, and what might, you know, what that, you know, what happens. Adverse effects to you. Yes, sir, yes, sir, very much so. All right, I guess we're in public comment. Lincoln, you got anything to add? No, I mean. I got some comments for you. Yeah, I mean, I was just uh, going over their land, so the right way goes over the potato part of land there. So I'm going to assume they probably also have the right to use it themselves. So, um, 
Congreg has nodded at us that that is accurate. I don't, it doesn't, it wouldn't appear other, I mean, if you all have deeded rights to that right of way, and they can't infringe upon it, and these are the, this demo matter, is it 16 or 50 foot right way? Yeah. I don't, you know, you know, you know, you know it's it been there a long time? Uh, 25 years. Um, it's at least 16 foot. They can't block your egress or back and forth, you know. Um, but they'll be good neighbors as well. I mean, that's that's what everybody's hoping. I mean, there's not really a mechanism at this point. They're not allowed to block it legally. Um, but hopefully they'd be good neighbors like the rest of y'all back in there. We'll move over and let one person come in and one person come out. That's that's that really is about it, isn't it? I'm Greg. Uh, that is correct. Um, you know, and I have not would encourage all of the owners on that road to research their deeds and make certain that they do in fact have the right to use that private road. Um, related to that, you know, any enforcement rights they may have among themselves will appropriately be decided you know, by the uh, Madison County Circuit Court where you know, the various uh, property owners will be involved in that litigation. It is unlikely that the county would have any ongoing interest in that litigation because again it is you know, enforcement of various people's private property. And again, that's based on my understanding that this road is in fact a private road. The one comment, if the deed does restrict the owner's ability to use the road, then they cannot use the road. But if they're the owners of the property, you know, and it is it is that is essentially just a right to use someone else's property. And that doesn't make the field a whole lot better, but I think that's probably the best case scenario. The most realistic case scenario. I mean, we all think. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I get, I've got a question on this, Mr. Jim. It's, um, and I'm sure there's an answer. So, right now, before this lot and this lot and that lot were created, right? This Briarwood Lane. With a deeded right of way, per Mr. Griffin, was serving one, two, three, four, four lots, um, four parcels. And that is the, the most in Madison you can put on a private on a private drive, which I guess Briarwood Lane is a private drive, right? Okay, so then these current owners ought to know that they cannot use. Briarwood Lane, because uh, we already, they've already there's already four on that lane. The fact that it's a deeded. Uh, go on, Greg. Go ahead. You see what I'm saying? No, I, I, I just just clear me up no. on this. Um, That's exactly right. It is their private property, so they're not really using it as a road. They're using it as, as their private property. property. Okay. Okay, I got it. Yeah, it was weird. I mean, essentially, here you could actually have seven people on that road. Correct. That's that's if there's other lots up there, Mr. Griffin doesn't do some of his. Gunter, Gunter, and Mr. Griffin here doesn't subdivide theirs. So I got a question for you. If that's the case, then why don't we just have the county come in and pay the whole damn thing? The county doesn't deal with roads. We don't do any road work. We ought we endorse the uh and that since it's a right of way, there's gotta be some exceedingly complicated process to it to make a new road, a uh, legal road. But John Greg, do you have any idea how that goes? I can only imagine that's a lot of rigorous. Well, you know, anything that is done by the Private citizens. And oh, they've got to read up and go on, and they can go to the office. Um, so, it would have to be brought up to state specifications. But, it would, and, but they would have to do, you all, as property owners, and you'd have to get every other person on there to sign off on it. Uh, would have to do all the work. And that's, then you get into like, was it soil and water stuff? And, and the, you probably don't want to go down that road. I'm not trying to be, trying not to be mean, but it seems. 
How many expensive beyond the way? Yeah. Although the folks at the Virginia Department of Transportation do a fine job. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's real positive. Um, <laughs> it's going to be stupid. If you disturb, if you disturb over, over one acre, uh, you have to get uh, a approval, which is great. I, if you want to do that, by all means, I'm not trying to discourage you in any way. I'm just telling you it's a DQ is a fun group. Uh, so can I? Yeah, please. Uh, to, to, to Cardi's question, though, um, so the county has to rec the county cannot recognize any more than four properties being accessed by firewood. Officially, that's what we're recognizing, and that's it. But the the rest of the private property owners up there, there's not much we can do about it. But we wouldn't, we would not entertain someone come in and say that 122 acre residue wanted to break that into four places and access it with Briarwood Lane. That's a bridge too far for us, right? Or a fifth. Okay. I'm just trying to understand how our four. I agree with that. Yeah. Remember that and we, we had this issue with not terribly long ago. A lot of it depends on when the road was created and the property that were in existence at the time the road was created. There are roads, as we learned several months ago, where people have rights to use a road. They had just never done so when they decided to um, take advantage of their right to use the road. There were a lot of neighbors who were upset by that. But in that particular case, the subdivision creating that person's right to use the road was created in 1947 before we had these limitations. And their right, they don't lose their rights by failing to exercise. Are you, Mr. Griffith, are you yes, landlocked in there? I mean, do you touch another public road? No, sir. I do not. If Mr. Webb would uh, scroll down, you'll see my my whole property there. Yeah. I think there's a whole other debate about personal property rights if Mr. Griffin was to decide that he wanted to subdivide his land. The restrictions on that easement being the main access to it, I think we can get into a whole different ball. And remember, all of that is necessarily dependent on what his John says or whatever representations Absolutely. have been made Absolutely. with regard to that. That would be good advice to Mr. Griffin. I would to teach. Make sure that and rest is probably make sure that, that deed is very sound in your favor. <laughs> Um, any other questions on this? Comments going to the public as well. Mike Mosca, did y'all discuss all this? I assume. Uh, we went over all this yesterday. Yeah. Don't come up with anything. Earth no, shattering. What's already been discussed later? Thank you. What y'all want to do here? Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd move that we uh, approve case number S-6-20-11 as recommended by the Planning Commission. Second. Motion made, second. Further discussion? Karen, no, no, all in favor, say aye. 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 Um, aye. Um, aye. Um, aye. Um, aye. Um, aye. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, July 1st is uh, the next joint meeting. And the Planning Commission uh, sort of voted that we would go back to the normal joint meeting. Uh, I think there's phase two, there's limits of 50 people in a room. We felt like uh, we could, July 1, go back to the regular schedule. Now, they'll say July 1 is when we do have uh, Barbara Miller's special use permit. Um, 
Cardi has a I gave him a uh, copy of it. And if anybody wants one, I'm actually running a little low. I'm going to upload it tomorrow to our, our, our website. So tomorrow, I'm going to upload documents for the June 17th workshop. I'm going to be out most next week. So I'm going to have that uploaded tomorrow. I'm trying to do everything I can to you know, talk to Barbara and get all the information that I need. Uh, the plan's really nice, but a lot of questions I have for her. And, so I'm working on that right now. So as of now, that July 1 would be the public hearing. There you go. Very good. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, anybody else got any questions for later? Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we do have Mr. Smith. Welcome back. Um, we're five minutes ahead of schedule. That's rare for us. Uh, come on, let's do this. I talk about we've got some, they've got a couple of additional questions, comments, advice, plans on. Uh, Bruce, can you uh, oh, put me on George? Or no, the one up here. Greatest. All right. Um, got that. Yeah. Oh, so, so you, you got that? You gonna read that? Yeah. I can read the picture in the Um So what we wanted to do tonight um, is to just have a regular speed briefing about what we've been doing, where we're at, and then talk to you a little bit about some decisions that like to uh, present to you get some input comment back from you. Um, so what we've been doing is assembling the sort of bones of final construction document bidding set and see, and I'm not going to go through every last page, it's going to be very boring for you, but I'm happy to, we're happy to answer these specific questions about the technical parts of it. Uh, but we have the cover page and a lot of other supporting notes. Uh, we have the mechanical electrical plumbing drawings which are for infancy, uh, but they are working on the starting to load calculations for the loads, uh, for the equipment replacement, things like that. Um, in addition to that, we have made uh, some exploratory adding uh, investigations under 410 to discover slight inconsistency in the drawings between what was built and what uh, is actually there. We've adjusted our plans accordingly to keep the structure for the plans. In addition to that, we met with a company called KNC Kinetics and Loads Control, which is a company that we work with in the past that deals with noise and acoustic solutions for built for commercial and residential buildings. And we uh, got them to do a quick analysis for us of the space, and they made some initial recommendations, which you'll see in the drawings that we're going to talk to you about tonight. Um, those are still sort of in the flex right now, obviously, we can run during the as well. I can run through that a little bit more so we can get to that point. Uh, in addition to that, the bigger the biggest issue I think tonight is that um, we've done, which was done a lot of interior elevations, uh, all the cabinetry stuff, uh, bathrooms, so on and so forth. So we've got and Jack is running through those right now. So we have interior elevations of all the office spaces that are the important ones so we can lay out where cabinetry countertops go and everybody can get a feel for that. Um, but a lot of those kinds of things we're happy to talk to you about, but we're assuming that we'll talk to the department heads about that specifically, unless there's a specific question that you have. And I wrote in a little agenda, which I think you probably got sort of outlining what we've done to date. Um, and also the sort of questions and issues that hopefully we can address with you this evening, get started addressing, and then the other ones we will talk to the department heads about. We have gotten some feedback already. From Stephanie Trevor, and I think also Brian. Um, so, with that in mind, um, I think we'd like to go to the, the public stuff, the public areas of the two buildings, 410 and 414, and we'll talk about the, this, this space to it. And I'll preface this by saying that architects have a reputation for sort of spending money. I 
understand that. We all we understand that. But what we try to do is to approach this uh, conservatively and modestly um, and try to find some ways of, of making public parts of the building a little bit more um, symbolically significant, maybe um, a little bit more dignified, hopefully, so that when the citizens of the county come and use it, they're pleased by it. Same time, we do not want to spend a lot of money unnecessarily for something. So we're trying to be very conservative about that. And to that end, what we're proposing is that we can give documents when we get to that point. We can do all the construction drawings as well as supplying specifications and notice to bidder. We will outline a series of what are called ad alternates, which are basically basically a menu of items that we can add to the base scope of the project. Hopefully, and I think this will be the case, we will be able to do this. But if for some reason we can't, then we can get it, go through, subtract out, add, sort of wait for So that's our intention. So with that in mind, um, this these are straight ahead elevations. So it's just like a plenary cut through building when you're looking at it. And I'm going to use my little pointer. Fine. So this top one is the corridor space, of, uh, the lobby space of the apartment on 410. We can use the two bathrooms. You might go back to the plan for just a second. So we're going to show you an elevation looking this way, along this point, looking that way, and one looking this way. And I think we can get two of them to so the two yeah, ends here, the hall. And, and along the hallway looking this way. So this is the public area right here. After we get to do that, when you're building zoning, you're the treasury, and the commissioner of revenue. And with all due respect, we're treating those a little bit less simple in terms of the ceiling tiles and things like that because it's a larger space. So now if you can go back to the equations. So what we're proposing is that if on the end, when you come in, this is through the existing storefront door. Madison County seal is here, and then there's probably some sign that says, well, to the administration building. And then these are small drawings, which you maybe you can see that this one is an airport and building zoning, finance, commissioner revenue, or not finance, commissioner revenue, and um, the treasurer's office this way. The bathrooms are here, and since they they push back in this way, that is a plan, they are back like that. And because there's a word found there, which is a requirement, Thought it would be a good idea to put the tile in that wall for water protection and for durability for people kicking and stuff like that. What we're suggesting is that the tile that's on the floor will be done. We're going to turn up the wall in all of the public spaces and stuff as a code base. And then on top of that, we're going to do some additive um, plywood panels over top of that. These are the types of things that you go to MWP and get plywood. Um, so everything is on top of either an existing or new frame wall. We're not doing sort of high custom cabinetry. And the, the idea behind this is to give people a wall that's a wall that looks like you're coming into a government building and come into it. But again, it's hopefully done fairly simply. We've got the conference room uh, windows here so that they grab light from the front so that they don't need daylight so much. Excuse me, you've got to use natural uh, uh, artificial light as much. And then turning around, this is looking back at the existing storefront. So we've got the existing storefront, we've got the copier room on this side, the conference room on this side, and then that paneling occurs on these two walls all the way. Why would the words on the conference conference rooms? Where oh that's looking at you That's okay. Uh, this is a borrowed side light here and the door, the same yeah. thing on this side. What we're trying to do with those, by the way, is try to get as much light from the front of the building into it. Make part of that. Then turning the corner down the hallway, which is the plan was going down this one to go to the commission uh, revenue. This is what you would see. So there's the other side, that wall. There's the door into the conference room. And then this is commission revenue. And at the other end, for me, the treasury, they get a glass, they get a full light through a glass door. Uh, and a bar of light on this side, so again, they get the light in, like from the windows are in front of the deck. From that point back, though, it's just paint. Just a standard paint grade we look at as the employee board going in there. So that's how we were treating this space. We're also showing um, some lights that are dropped down a little bit below the 
just don't see everything. The reason for that is that that part of the lobby currently, which is a lot larger than what we're going to space that we're going to have left when we put all these other uses and rooms into it, is higher than some of the other areas. And we think that that's a little bit too high for such a you know, space. So let's put some pendant lights that come down about six to 12 inches so that that sets a line going through the space to shine up and shine down. And that's what you see. Uh, um, these are more interior departmental things. Uh, I to check quickly. This is a building and zoning here. This one is on the opposite side of building and zoning. These are various cadet elevations in future revenue treasury. Right? And we need to speak to uh, Brian a bit more about this one. Because one of the issues that we do want to talk to him about is Issue of sneeze guards and all that kind of stuff is going to be coming up. And so that's something that we want to try to get integrated into this package for everybody so that it, it's decided that that needs to be We get that into the cost of the construction scope of work as well. And I guess the last thing I think I said this in the agenda is we're trying to, be, we're trying to replicate the kinds of doors that we're using. And what we did is we made a decision, and hopefully you agree with us, is that we should use doors that are metal doors that are full light, so they get as much light in them as possible. Um, that uses artificial energy to use for light. It also means there's transparency, a sense of not being sequestered, and so on and so forth. That said, there is an issue of privacy, we understand that. So on, I think page 8 10, right? we have included a cut sheet of a, of a film, a privacy film that can be applied over glass uh, to screen it in different areas so that you can see a person's head, but his body so and so forth. And there are a lot of different, a lot of different um, variations on that kind of film. And that's an additive film. And it's about fifty dollars a year, so it's a lot easier to do it that way than to try to get a custom glazing. And we're trying to, other than that, reuse the same kind of door, the same kind of side lights, and we're transit to this particular place because we're going to be sending this private department that has the least natural light in it because of where it's located. Right? We're trying to use those over and over again so that we have a greater quantity of the same kind of um, and I would like to go on and talk about this one a little bit because it involves um, the treasurer's office. So some of this stuff up here is just that storage and countertops and their their miscellaneous storage areas, and we're we're incorporating their needs into that. This drawing, this drawing, this drawing are about the cashier's desks. And so this is an elevation that we straight on at them. So when we came in, this is the plan. This is the section we cut. And what we're trying to do on this is to be pretty simple about it. The, the partitions, the, the edges that make the, the cashier sit behind are just framed walls that will come in and we'll clad in this thing like plywood, do some, some nice things to it, but it's all sort of built on top of the framing. We're hoping that we can use a solid surface material on top that then turns down on this edge right here so it gives a nice thick edge kind of like a piece of stone, but not not the cost of stuff. One of the issues that we do need to discuss with them is the amount of and whether there is any safety or security glazing in these areas, and if so, how we pass through. And that's a discussion that we need to have with them directly. Richard has shown two different options. One is you know, sort of bank teller where you yell at the teller through the through the hole in the glazing. The other is where it's cut up and you can slide things through. I think this last one is the one that it's like that, right? So you know, it's recessed down into the countertop. All right. Let me have glass glassroom plexing to have any, you know, one inch plexing, something like that. And it's all held in between these piers, which are these lines here, and then just a soffit that goes across, soffit or bulkhead that goes across. Um, these are the bathroom elevations, and I'll just point out one thing on this. Our, our approach on the bathrooms is to be very simple. Tile floor to tile floor base. That's for maintenance and durability. Um, we do the baby changing station and all those sorts of things. We are showing wall tile, which we would like for everybody to entertain as an ad alternate because it, ad, it, it makes for easier maintenance around the sinks and for splashing and things like that. But what we start with is probably five base jetta with the center walls paint coated on it. And then Excuse me, if we can add to that, we would like to do, go with the tile wings going up to about the width of the height of the 
original set. This is the cabinetry layout for the, um, the break rooms. That's fairly straightforward. And then um, this is these are the drawings for this building. So when I come in, you come in the front door here, and turn, go down that hall, look that way, along with zoning and the uh, treasurer's office, that's this elevation right here. So this is the area where you come in, and it has the seal, and then this is the rotor registration door. That's the first space to the, in front of you when you come in, as we discussed and laid out the plans. And the paneling goes down to the end of the door that marks the, de it's the demarcation between, excuse me, the public's part here and the non public part here, which is quite as nice to the administrator. And we've got the two doors here. This is this wall right here, looking from the outside in. So the paneling is on this one. And then we are proposing that we do do wood doors here. So you can see that from, the, from that, it, it's pulled into the paneling line comes along this wall. And other than that, um, on this wall, which is the wall returning right up there, not this wall right here, but on the opposite side, there would be a display case for announcements and things like that. And then that wall would be clad in the same tile that we're talking about in the other one. It turns the corner, fountains put on the tile wall, and two bathrooms are there. So the same kind of <coughs> use of palette of materials is used in both buildings. This other Elevations are elevations of the uh, <coughs> that's all the mechanical. It's the mechanical room and the service sink. This is the door leading out on the other end. And this is the other. This is uh, finance. Yeah. So we're drawing all these elevations so that everybody, so that contractor, folks are building this, and people that are sourcing the windows and doors know exactly what they've got. We're scheduling all these things. We're scheduling the list all these things. But it's useful for them to see all this stuff as well. So that's what we're hoping to do here. Same, same tile floor, same tile that rolls up six to eight inches on the fit of the long floor. And then uh, standard uh, ACT acoustic ceiling tile in here. Uh, in the mid room spaces, we propose that we use what's called a tegular one, which is one that drops it into slightly. We put a cut sheet of that on the tent. That would be for the public space here, 414, 410, only for those two spaces. Your place else gets more standard time in this space because this is such a tall ceiling that we didn't think it makes sense to spend additional money on fancier tile here because it's so hot. So now I think we go with the wood. So this is what we're suggesting for the auditorium. And I think these drawings are a little distorted, but let me. We did have some conversations with the group, yeah, um, just recently in the last day or so. First, we, um, we did update this monitor to the 86 inch size, as you talked about. But we also showed a little dash rectangle and said, well, we can actually get a 100, 100 inch diagonal here if we need to. This one on this side is not updated, so that's still the small one. We did a little, I did a little initial pricing on it, but the groups did a lot more and found some things that are pretty price. Effective. So, you know, he thinks that we need to have an 86 probably in the monitor size. So, what we're proposing is that these two sides, right here and right here, the monitors go on the wall. The green is just paint on the ceiling here. And then around that, on the same wood panels with the same seal, it just wrap this back wall like that. And then there's a chair rail right here, which becomes a chair rail that goes around the other three sides. Here, here, here. Above the chair rail on the acoustic panels. And KMC said that we should have at least 400 square feet of acoustic sealant, acoustic material to absorb the reverberation in space. And we've got about 575 to 600 with these different panel sizes that we've got here. We tried to stay with the standard panel, which is 4x8, 4x9, 4x10. But we do have a couple that we had to cut and pull out. Other than that, we're just proposing that the bottom underneath here be painted CMU. This line here is in the same year, the same thing up above. So, and Richard also would like to propose that there is an option. Seriously. Um, and, and I think it's a great idea um, that above the middle here, there might be a URL if we can find, if we can find 
find the local artist and take them something. Yeah, this guy, we could work with somebody to get that piece up here. But I think it's a great idea. Uh, I was, I didn't want to base the entire design on it because you can't find something. If you can find something, I think it's, I think it's a good idea. So we, we, uh, we're also, we're also proposing, I think I mentioned to you briefly, monitor here, which would be right about in this area. Show them, try and see by size. So we come down about, 24 to 30 inches, and that would be the one that you all would see here, rather than having one on the end wall. In addition to that, we are suggesting that we drop this ceiling 12 inches down so that we isolate it a little further from the HVAC equipment. It should make it a little bit quieter. It will also give us a better plan for this in between space for us to pull the daylight power through. And I did check with the MEP engineers, and they don't see any issue with that. Should have flexible duct run outs that come out to this that doesn't shouldn't occur in the substantial additional cost of the uh, Since this is standard, we just come down anyway. We thought that this was a good opportunity to do that. I think our feeling is that, uh, with the exception of these two layers, we have to do this, that there was no negative impact to the equipment. So, if we turn so this is the elevation, the top is the elevation of the back wall. So the panels just go around, and this is the other side as well. So it's the same thing. So that's the board auditorium, but there are two other, there's one or two other issues I want to bring up for everybody to consider. And I think we need to go to the original one and then go to the new one. Yeah, yeah, okay. This is what I'm talking about. So we also, one of the things we, we both know is when we so Mary Jane Costello is, is stealing his lectern, is, is talking. She was always a meeting, right? Because it's always sitting on the ramp side. So one of the things that we think we need to address is where people stand to present to the board so that they actually are sitting in the lectern that's, that's not kind of really wobbling. Um, and we, we came up with two options. But before that, we also we're allowing two spaces for wheelchairs and maybe which I believe that we are going to need to do uh, from an accessibility standpoint. Um, it's a little bit of a gray area given the kind of work that's occurring here, but unless the board feels otherwise, we think it makes sense to at least demarcate those spaces for possible wheelchair use since they've been coming this way. Um, so the two options that we came up with for presentation were, were um, a basic option, which is a lectern that uses pre-made lecture that was really inexpensive when it puts it in a box, puts the box on the platform. And underneath the platform is locking level casters that are, that are accessible so that that can be stored anywhere and rolled over, jacked up, just like a jack up the it's a good level. So it's there and ready to be used. Um, we tried to find something that was, that was more custom, that was done with more kind of special stuff, but we can't really find anything. So this guy right here, this lecture is about Dollars. This is about probably about two hundred dollars worth of plywood to use. So. so I think that's a good solution that um, you know, addresses that and it's still adjustable. So for people of different heights that come here, they can they can use that. We would also we also proposing that it's got a mic power and data connection in, and then that comes out and stinks over to either one side or the other wherever that is going to be the site of the park. And that's really great. We can add stuff down from the kind of AD with us. That's what we were thinking. Yeah, but we both need to talk to you about that soon. So, so I think it helps. It's, some of it depends on which half we take on this path, but you know, where people, people stand. If, every, if, if I think that's an important issue. The other option is to basically fill in this floor where I'm standing to the level of this here. So it would do this over. Come back a little bit, put that, and then die. So we come to zero here and shoot across. And that gives you enough space as you can see for that, that thing right there. That's a person plan. The ground thing is this size. And when not being used, the lectern can be stored over here on this low, low, low piece right here. It still allows three feet, which is a requirement for an island. 
get down here. This aisle has, however, has to be accessed from this side. So this person in this seat can't do this unless they step up over that curve of the floor area. We would probably we would propose putting the curve here anyway so people would need to curve and pop off the leverage and all that or something. From the egress and the traffic is standpoint, this is not an issue. Um, but there's some people might argue that this is a little bit more intrusive right, filling this part in. I, I think it's kind of a judgment call. So we wanted you to see both options that we thought would be less for the So have I forgotten anything that needs to be touched on the rules? So I think that's basically where we're at. We're, so we we are continuing on as I said earlier. Conversation with the MDP folks, so we expect to have excuse me, reflected ceiling plans with lighting and all that sort of stuff within the next week to two weeks. And then we will get back together with you to the extent that you would like us to, to go over that. We'll also have a lot more cut sheets that is you know, pictures of materials and things like that, in addition to the stuff that we showed on page uh, 10 uh, for ceiling for the ACT acoustic ceiling tiles and all the other bits and pieces that need to go in the projects. We'd like to make sure that you've seen all the things that we're going to do in, in, in general if we agree with those. So our next step would be, you know, assuming that we have you know, based on your comments tonight, is to go back and make whatever or any revisions that we do need to do on this. And then also go to the department heads, I think you go to meeting or separately or by phone or something, go ahead and make you have your Specifics of some of these things that are, that are specific to them. And we are shooting for uh, this is going down June 3rd. We're shooting for trying to get this wrapped up by the end of this month so we can then start to do a notice to do it. And then we need to go over that gap. And I think also we can see that contracts and things like that for contractors. So that's, that's our game plan. We still have a lot more work to do. This is kind of an important meeting for us to be watching to see what we're thinking about and see what we can agree with. So, with that, we have to answer questions. All right. Do we have any questions initially? We all think, I think we, we need to, we all think about the layouts of the two buildings and the designs that they put together. Look okay? Yeah. I like we it. We're good on this. Yes. And then, in turn, we Send them to talk to department heads and make sure everything's good and we move on. Is that it will just yes, sir. Yes, I think we're in, in pretty good shape layout wise and floor space and all that. Everybody seems to be guilty for that. Some some of this stuff is new and we got these drawings yesterday, so we're not, not like we really have time to digest them. But I want to go back to this business about the wood paneling and the, 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 it's a departure for us because now we've got Cinder block, drywall, aluminum, and this is wood tone is, is going to be different for this campus. Um, can you talk a little bit about how that might affect um, natural light in these spaces? Um, how it might tie the two buildings together? What, what cost of all that versus just drywall? Yeah, that's something that we, which I've added around a lot. And we, what we're trying to do is to find architects use the word vocabulary, to find the materials out that we thought was modest and relatively inexpensive that we could use across the two buildings to provide them together. Um, also, the government federal office buildings in the past have always used interior wood paneling as kind of a signifier of this is an important building you should pay attention to. You should be proud to do this too because it's part of your so what we were trying to do is to find some way of masking, to be honest with you, some of the seats with the concrete block that's in the building because it's there's nothing wrong with it, but it's pretty utilitarian. But we also know that we don't have a budget to smear stuff all over the place. We looked at trying drywall on the top of it places because it's CMU, that means we have to shoot it in with how we're actually fast. There's all sorts of issues with doing that. So what we decided to do instead was to live with the scene here and say there are a lot of places where it's perfectly fine and it, it, it does its job exactly the way it needs to, but we 
there are certain places where we should try to put a little bit more emphasis. And we thought that the news areas that the people, that the public saw when they came in, and also the board auditorium. That said, drawings, because we have to render them using some rendering techniques and vector works, tend to look a little dark. And what we're proposing is to comply with the lighter color of thing, probably like the white oak, the natural white oak, clear cut white oak, maybe ash, maybe maple. I know that MDP has maple. Um, and maple is a light blue. This is this is what it comes to me here. So what we're looking at is not something that's kind of like a dark kind of church interior. It's something that's a little bit lighter, a little bit simpler. We're also suggesting that the panels we put on will have to be put on the referring as they do attach them to the block walls from a cabinetry standpoint. But then when we do panels, we do them like that and they touch one another, but not quite. So there's a little reveal. So that you see each panel as a as an object on the wall, and that gives you sort of a sense of scale, but also a sense of I think like grandeur, or sort of a little bit more quality of material than you might find otherwise. So Jack correctly pointed out, we were trying to find the, the uniformity of material that you're using the same design style between the two different facilities to make it look like an administrative uh, administrative <laughs> complex for the job. That's correct. There you go. <laughs> um, right. I mean, it looks good. The building for your government buildings have wood and you need to be pulsing at multiple times. But it's more of light, it's a little absorb a lot of light in comparison to some of the light, more white type of things. Even using, I mean, using like a white oak would definitely reflect a little bit differently than like wall or other floors. Right. Um, but it will start up, but it will give you. I think that, yeah, I think you're correct on both counts, which is why we don't want to do a really dark one. But we're also going to be looking at upgrading the lighting a little bit too. So, what we want to try to do is to put the light down on the floor and the work surfaces, as opposed to just kind of spreading it out. And then we can use incidental spotlights, downlights, or whatever, to light certain things like the medallion, for instance. And we're welcome to the administrative center east or the administration of the east, if that's where we decide on the side. But you're absolutely right. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, and I think Richard's right. It's part of going forward. We plan on putting together some materials or, or at least some, some more developed set of cut sheets that show the different colors and things like that. We're definitely keeping those, those issues. What do you buy 100 inch TVs for, Livingstone? <laughs> well, I've been one of the yeah, you can't say how much. How much? Hundred and forty-five. Um, what do you all think about the auditorium design and leveling out this floor? I mean, what, what do you all think? And leveling that right over there? So just about a measure from that there. This is for sure. Tell me why it needs to be on this side versus that side. <laughs> you know, people, people are going to yell rather than be over there. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So like, if you level out the floor, though, your seating. Yeah. Now you've got an elevated seating like a theater. But they're not talking about going back. They're not going back to the basic. Right oh, okay. this is a great more this yeah. oh, okay. So it would be right here, 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 like that. Can you do it on this side? We don't think so because oh. it's the second one to the egress for the space. Okay. And that's why we have to do it. Okay. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Like a safe, let's put some, like a shield, let's like some of those sugar packets and uh, uh, just shove them under there and take care of it. Yeah, let's uh let's talk to Troy and see what EA Clore can do for us. Everything looks good to everybody. Question specific to Mr. Um finally I, so we're doing nothing with the seating now. That that was talked about earlier, and that's we, we propose that as something that you might want to consider that is an add is an add item. We're not going with that right now. Okay. 
I, I, I propose again that we, we can, we're happy to inspect something on it and get the prices and add all the input. We're not, we're not basically any design on that right now. Okay, good. I mean, you not see the green behind it? It goes with the green <laughs> seat. Hey, I, I got no problem with those seats right there. Gracie, how's that seat? Okay. What else do we have to do? I like it. Yeah, that looks really good. Yep. Yeah. Come back to it. Well done. Some finalized, more finalized type stuff. Very good. Anything else to do, gentlemen? Yeah. Clarify. I think your lecture is going to be good. The lecture with casters. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, there you go. Did you post, did you leave me a copy of that before? That was me. Oh, did you? Okay. Not really. We actually, we need to, we have to, we have to get together and talk because we need to figure out where, you, where we want to sort of do it. In fact, a patch panel here where everything, where all the controls are. Can you, would you mind sending that to me? I'm sorry? Would you mind sending that to me? Well, I don't know. I was looking, I meant mostly for the layout so we can see what somebody else is thinking about that and then we can. I think what we'd like to do is try to get together with you either today's Wednesday, either by Friday or at the latest Monday, Tuesday of next week. Mm -hmm. And, and okay. do a little session with you. The other thing I didn't mention I should is that we were proposing also that we give you a backsplash here about this height so that we could add power and data into that. And, Go ahead, please. Uh, and you could also you could mask some of the stuff that's on the desk too. But you're going to you're going to cover these. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But as they exist, the now. only the only comment sitting on the audience side, and especially over here, putting up two high up splash guards is bad. I mean, it just makes us go back to so way well, back in the hole. I, I, I agree with you. Anything. That we do. I like the transparency side. Do you think that something this high is Probably, too, yeah. too much? No. So maybe we need to look at something to clear, clear so I don't know. I think if you start, I, I mean, I'm thinking like four inches yeah, is about right. it. Because I mean, the more that we're down into a hole, uh, the, so the cheapest we not there for a few We don't want to look like we're hiding. No, but, and especially up here. I mean, yeah. sitting here and sitting up here is one thing, but I realize constantly that people can't see anything we're doing up on top But these the chairs are too low for this counter. You said way, you feel like you're way up. So we, we, we fixed no, Bill Campbell's computer. Yeah. We also fixed his chair. That's right. Um, and we'll come back to you with the, with the lower option that we might be, as long as it's a four plus, we can, we can get boxes in for the right. Uh, and we can use that as a wiring chase to run the back and forth. So, so we can talk to you about that and then we'll come back to you with the selection of the device. Anything else to do, gentlemen? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's straight with them. Oscar, lights, please. Thanks, sir. Um, Bruce, can I turn this off? Yeah. Can you do that from your thing? What do you want me to do? You can take it from your thing. I don't have to do anything. I certainly can, sir. All right, we got to scheduling maybe we'll, we'll catch up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm being All right. Information and correspondence. We may take some action on a couple of these. Um, six year plan, Bob. Um, yes, the uh, um, board approved the six year plan at the, uh, the last meeting. 
And uh, I thought we had everything straight with the highway department, but uh, apparently not. Uh, they have some slightly different numbers that they would like the board to approve. Um, so you've got the, the package in front of you. Projects, uh, uh, I believe, are the same. It's just the uh, the total amount of money for each year is, is different. So um, just wanted yeah. to run that by the board to make sure you're aware that, uh, that VDOT came back with different figures. Do you have the, the previous one? Yes. Can you throw it up there real quick? Yes. That one. I'm curious too how different. I mean, you're <clears throat> losing. Yeah. Maybe. <clears throat> That's the total. The total key is all running the same. I think some, some of these estimates were. It's only one, should be only one number off. That first one on District Grant. It's 244 versus 241. Anybody got any problem with this? I just, no. That that would be handy. Yes. No, do we have yeah. a resolution to adopt, or do we just want to adopt a correction to the? Yes. Second. I'll correct. I move to adopt the correction to the B dot six year plan as presented. Second. Uh, Motion made and seconded. Further discussion, and that is to the. Secondary system Madison County construction program estimated allocation, correct? Any other discussion? There no, all in favor say close. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, this next item might be uh, Sean's. Um, the um, we were advised that the state is going to allow an increase in court security fees. This is a fee that the, uh, Sean might be able to explain this better. Um, very simply, the Commonwealth of Virginia has enabled us to increase some of the court costs associated with criminal traffic cases um, from a maximum of $10, which is what we currently have, to $20. Um, based on my conversation with other local government attorneys, most localities and counties are um, taking advantage of this increase. Um, we do not have to, um, but if the source of light, I'm happy to put this together for a public hearing and you can make a determination what you would like to do. One reason there is a little bit of urgency for this is has to do with um, the way the costs are calculated. Um, the, Basically, the state system, and it would be helpful to Ms. Lauk if we had this taken care of. Did anybody know that we had the authority to set this? I, mean, I have never heard of this before in my life. Bob mentioned it to me earlier. I have no idea. I've never heard of it. Uh, in 2007, we passed an ordinance enabling us to do that. And I believe that's the last time that uh, we passed an ordinance. Before then, I do not know the answer. No, just never, never heard of the Um, When would uh, you propose to have a public hearing on this? Um, so what? What? Uh, right. So, if it is the pleasure of the board that we contemplate this increase, I will put together the advertisement and uh, we'll let the public know. If the board chooses to leave the fees to cost where they currently are, Price to do that as well. It's a revenue opportunity. Yeah. I'm like us to pass up the revenue opportunity. What do y'all think? Yeah, I'm in favor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, do you make a motion on the other side? Well, I'll just give you direction. The general consensus, let's move on. Everybody nodding their head positively. 
No, this this is the kind of thing that just appeared. We didn't know this was out there, and to make it make it square, it's, uh, we bring it tonight because if we wait till next week, we have problems with the advertising deadlines. Um, Yes, we had a meeting with the, uh, the, the toppings committee met last week, uh, and you're represented on that with uh, Mr. Jackson and Ms. Foster. Um, the long and the short of it is the, um, the group will recommend that you fund the uh, organization to the tune of $1,000 uh, over this next fiscal year out of the topping committee money. Um, the idea is that we would uh, see additional cats um, spayed or neutered this program that money. So this would be a reimbursement thing where the animals would not oh, would not come into the shelter. Uh, they would never be county cats. And it's, it's an arm's length thing, which is important. Uh, 16. 16. Yeah. This would get us. Why, why do we need to go to a private group to do something that that's, that's been done by the county? I mean, why do we need to? Branch out into a private groups. Is there some reason? We, well, two things. One, Greg gave probably is going to come to us in the past. Um, and basically, what we've done is get vouchers, subsidizing it for people. Yeah. Um, here's where that's going to come back around. I think this is one, one, but I think this is one that is, you know what. Know all the scrutiny, unfounded scrutiny that the animal shelter has been under. I think this is one that is kind of a goodwill gesture. <laughs> 16 point six cats out, and they're trying to do the best, not bring them to us. So is this a one time thing? Is this something we're planning to do? The way that we laid out the other day is let's start with a lower sum, evaluate the relationship again. I, I, I just I, I think it's going to be a fiasco. Ms. Hoffman has a, has a valid point, and this is fraught with potential problems that we've tried to mitigate with some of these conditions. I do think, though, that this gets at a, a, a problem with animal control that the county is trying to stay out of. We're trying to stay away from um, feral cats and feral cat colonies and in the, in the proposed animal control policy. As a matter of fact, we try to be a little more explicit about that, that uh, we, we do not dispatch animal control to um, the cat problem unless there's a health issue. So we, we're trying to stay out of it. So these folks are trying to work uh, with folks that have feral cats and feral cat complaints and, and all that. But you so know, that's, he, that's, he said in a meeting one night that they, you know, they would spay them or neuter them. Then they're going to turn them back out there. They have done this year. That are running around, probably not and being fed. Apparently, there are 19 uh, colonies in that. There you go. I mean, yeah, we have. Well, you know, to me, if a thousand dollars will keep that from coming back before the board again, <laughs> then it's about a thousand dollars well well spent. Yeah, they're going to come back. The right there. They're going to come back. It's not going to stop. It is a little bit of. They're providing a service, but it's also a low risk I mean, I hate to say it. They've, they've got good intentions. They definitely have raised money by selling hats and socks. Um, but then they've also got some other people that have donated them some money, which is good. Um, I think out of the topic funds, they are restricted specifically for that. Start there. Shouldn't you have made it like an even 17 cats? What are you going to do with the point six? $1,000 is lots better than 16.66 cats. I, I'm not giving them a number of cats. I give them they would need it. Put that uh, in the paper. Um, okay. 16.6 cats. But also, Jack made a good point that this is not taxpayers' dollars. No. It's coming out. Sorry. Um, at any rate, this will be on the docket uh, uh, next week. We should read through some of this. We tried to uh, address a lot of the points that
would be a concern to the board members. Good meeting. Are we moving the action to that? No, you all want to do it tonight. You want to do it tonight. If you're comfortable, but I just want to make sure everybody reads this before the next meeting. We all want to do it. I, I would. Amber and I have been in it. Yeah, y'all want to wait with tonight. We do it. Or do it. Anybody have questions? Is there is there any more to it than that? No. About, no, no well, the only one that's on it just a just a call me. Um, this is a reimbursement type of thing. We are not cutting them a check for a thousand dollars. They will submit bills for the services they rendered up to a thousand dollars, and that's the way this. So we'll see a supplemental appropriation moving this as necessary. Yes. So the topping com fund committee uh, voted yeah. to do this. Yes. Sir. Oh, but it's really a, more of a consensus thing. Okay. Yeah, we, we got the minute. Um, so let's do it. Yeah. An idea. We'll try. They all are. Yeah, so Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, we abide by the um, topping committee's decision to support Mad Cats with the thousand uh, dollars to be reimbursed as they make the expenditures. Second. Motion yeah. made second. Further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of signal Bobby say no. Aye. 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 Yeah. Nay. There you go. Um uh, Tom still got financial software replacement project. Um Got to, and put this in your uh, um, on your sticks, but there's uh, a timetable for the uh, project that the consultant put forward and reminded us of. Responses were due today uh, for the uh, from the RFP. Um, last I checked, there were four or five. I didn't quite uh, uh, grasp that. I don't know what uh, I can't give you a report on the total, but the scheme is that they will be posted on the. Uh, share drive that our group is using tomorrow and we'll be working on that next meeting of this group is supposed to be next um, that would be wednesday to uh, talk about shortlisting so um, we're there um, this is uh to, to to march forward and have a contractor in place by the end of july is uh, that's uh, mr yell might chime in here but that's that's going to be a piece of work and um we're going to put a lot of time in on this Say that the last board meeting that we've been pushed off basically a month. From month, yeah. So, I mean, you're going from July to August? No, from June to July. July. No, the hope was a couple of months ago, the hope was we'd have, have a contractor lined up by the end of June. That's right. And, gonna be able to do that. and we've talked to Think IT is like, okay, so. If we push push the decision off till the end of July, is eleven months enough time to implement? They said yes. So that's the good news. I'd rather see this done. If it takes a couple a month extra, no big deal. To implement, do this right. This is a big big thing. It is. We just go south on it. We have any questions on this? Uh, no, so the entire group is going to be part of the shortlisting next week, right? That's the, that's the thing. Yes. Now, I, um, there's a group, but certainly some people are more interested in some parts than others. So yeah. that, that's just what we're going to have to be working through on this. Again, this might not be a vote. It might be more of a consensus sure. type right. of sure. situation. Um, Here's Zach's funding, Bob. Um, and this this is uh, to get you set up for um, something that's probably going to take a month or two to unfold. But uh, on Monday, the county received uh, a 
million four hundred fifty six nine hundred seventy one thousand dollars um, in uh, CARES, this coronavirus relief fund, it's CARES Act money. And there's all these conditions on how it can be spent, when it can be spent, uh, all this stuff. Everything I've read rolls back to the actual language in the CARES Act, which I've got here, and it's, it's on your sticks. But um, uh, these three conditions, and you have to certify uh, this and that. Um, the documentation is, if, if you want to uh, look it up, I'll put it on your stick. It's, it's fairly straightforward, and in about 30 minutes, you'll be as tuned up as anybody is on this because there's a whole lot of questions and not a lot of guidance. So uh, there's that. Um, we talk about uh, different kinds of things we could fund with this. We've had all sorts of personal protective equipment and um, hand sanitizer and, and uh, uh, spit guards and this and that that we've purchased since the onset of the pandemic. Um, certainly want to maneuver to have those things uh, reimbursed through this money or claimed against this money. Um, my opinion is it'd be better for the county if we could backfill our expected revenue shortfall, but currently the law doesn't allow that. That's uh, That would be a, a good thing if Congress could come around to that conclusion. I think and, they and we, will. And we've got, and it's, it's yes, and that, that that's, a, that's a big hope, and that will resolve a lot of this if that comes to pass. Um, we've got a whole series of small and immediate items we could be spending money on, things like, um, uh, new spit guards. We have a couple of offices that have asked for uh, laptops so they can keep the people in the field and not out of the office and not have to share and uh, all, all those kinds of things that uh, help prevent the spread of disease. Um, EMS has uh, had uh, good luck with these PAPR devices and now they'd like to have some more, um, but uh, at least in the, for the PAPRs, that's, that's $10,000. So at some point you cross the line from what Jack is willing to sign off on that we can probably cover somewhere else in the budget, but there's this money out there that we think would, would qualify. Um, we do not have our list together for that. We do not have recommendations and, and all that. Um, I talked to Clay earlier, and he's, uh, I, I guess the, the bright idea is that we have internal public safety um, things we'd like to uh, reserve this money for, and that's, that, that's fine, but we also have, whether you talk about them or not, the, Constitutional officers, school board, social services, ERA, they are county agencies. Um, beyond that, we have regional groups that we could divert money to, I understand, or they could claim expenses that we could then um, say, well, we spent the money on these agencies, and so that's, that, that's claimed against this fund. Um, we could uh, allocate money to nonprofit programs for things like this uh, coronavirus testing event um, and, uh, and feeding programs and, and all that kind of stuff. It's not tradition for Madison County, but that is possible. And beyond that, um, there are some economic development, uh, economic incentive programs uh, for um, keeping businesses operational. So um, again, that's not something Madison County has ever really gotten into, but it's common practice in other areas. So the, my scheme on this is to um, Put together a little bit of a working group, develop, um, you know, call it what you want, a wish list, but you have to start somewhere. And you start triaging that and getting down to what, what might be priorities for the county, uh, get, a, get a grip on what things might cost, verify the money can be spent uh, either or whatever it is, and follow the rules so that it's done before Christmas. And uh, in that regard, if it's something big, you know, we need to talk about doing a procurement now. Um, this is a problem on things like ambulances because chances are we might not be able to get an ambulance before Christmas if that is determined as a county's priority and it's allowed. So we, we've got a lot of sort, uh, a lot of things to sort through. Um, if I could help it, uh, we, we would uh, be back in front of the board on the 23rd with some sort of report on, on this. Maybe by then we'll have a little more guidance and we can, we can make some progress, but we're, we're, we, we just don't know enough about this yet, uh, and we're not we're not ready. Um, but requests are starting to roll in, so we might be ready for folks that approach you on ideas. Schools also want to prepare that money for the heirs of 
Spend the money is December 31st, 2020. The window is between monies that were spent between March 1 yeah. and December 30. Coming up. December 30. Yeah. Okay. If you have done procurement and all the trade procurement, why can we not pay for it prior to the order? Talking about ambulance. No, I mean, anything. I mean, really, I mean, I, it's used it. It's a very common, I know, much different. Very well, I, I, I don't disagree, but just it's, it's, expenses were incurred, and, and how do you? Yeah, that's what we're great. That extra seventy bucks for. Uh, <laughs> what did you yeah, Anything else? Yeah. 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 Well, just, so you know, like when the um, uh, Affordable Care Act came out, they suddenly there were all these experts running around and then you had these advocates that were here and there so so who who do we ask the questions of or to at this point we're hoping that uncle sam will come out with more guidance documents yeah well, and 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 because that that's who we have to report to any number of people that will tell you this uh we i think we're starting to see salesmen which is well you can use your cares money for this and that so we, you know, yeah, we're we're we're, we're, we're onto that. The, the thing is, we need to. Yeah. No, I say, I, I really think they're going to uh, come around and let us let us use it for revenue uh, loss, shortfalls. Uh, so, um, go wait it, yeah. I mean, I don't I mean, they're, they're, they're squishing the first place. There, there are enough people with questions on this. That, that we're, so we don't have a phone number for questions, though, exactly, right? You know what I mean? Not to my knowledge. I mean, I'm in the same boat at Skyline right now with a bunch of funding, too. So I, I agree. You got to spend this. Well, how? What do I got to report on? Well, we don't know yet, but you go spend it. We'll you tell you later. Um, they'll give us some more before the 23rd. Maybe they're planning on kind of being a ask for forgiveness later yeah. type of thing. And yeah. yeah. Give everybody yeah. Or yeah. Or I mean, the other than using it for budget shortfalls, which could be amended, a little bit of leeway in a situation like this is probably fairly appropriate. What else got for That's it. Anybody else on this one? Summer 2020 financing problem. Um, we've been uh, bumping along on this. Um, the the one of the issues that uh, we, we have to get past is it's going to take action by three different boards: the uh, school board, and we're uh, uh, tentatively on the docket for approval. On Monday, and this is to uh, get permission to use a couple of school sites as collateral against the loan. 
um, the uh, resolution has been floated for Board of Supervisors on how to borrow money and, and all that kind of stuff. So that should be one vote and pretty straightforward according to the discussion uh, last meeting. And then the, uh, the technicality on this is that um, we would uh, be borrowing money, or officially the, the IDA would be borrowing money from the bank, <laughs> leasing the school to the county and the school board for all that. So it's a it's an end around of the state constitution limitation on counties can't directly borrow money uh, without a referendum. So that's that's the long and short of that. Um, so three meetings next week to um, uh, to get all this done. Uh, they sent a batch of documents in today. I'm sure Sean's read them all by now. So. Uh, um, I would ask that uh, or suggest that um, after a long about Wednesday, you might leave Sean alone because he's he's going to be tied up with this substantially. I'll try. <laughs> and all this is marked in toward a June uh, 26 uh, closing, uh, and that's that's an official date. But I understand this; uh, they can have us all sign papers as appropriate, and we'll get X and back and. That so that we don't have these big signing parties like they did back in the day. Um, I did want to uh, uh, bring up one thing and make, make sure board members know this. this. This idea about refinancing is not free. Um, if you look at case A, which is just financing the new, the new projects, and case C, which is refinancing existing debt, and the uh, Davenport document, they're on different sections, and so it's, it's hard to track. So I did some math on it. The long and the short of it is the uh, uh, refinancing saves our budget next year to the tune of about six hundred sixty thousand dollars. There's that much less money going out toward debt service than we uh, would have normally if we just finance existing projects. So uh, that's fine and well, but if you look at the total repayment over the life of the loan, we're talking about uh, pushing one point four million dollars. Now that, that's over 20 years, don't get me wrong, but that's still $1.4 million going out the door than otherwise. And the reason we're doing this is to uh, get relief on next year's budget and uh, uh, free up cash flow in the short run. But in the long run, it, there are more dollars going out. I just want to make sure board members understand that because that's, that's where we're headed. That makes sense. Yep. But, Fair I point. do. I understand. And that's why I'm, my two points were, uh, number one, I'm buying time. And number two, it'll never go 20 years. We'll redo it before we get there or pay it, pay it down quicker. Uh, you know, uh, we, we pay it off after five years if something happened. Right. No, with no call. Right. Right. With no call. So, yeah, I, I understand. But I do appreciate no, what you're saying, Jack. Okay, well, I, I just don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Get gone six months from now. Wait a minute. We didn't. We didn't. Okay. All right. That's all. Um. All right. Um. Rescue squad. Three Yes, uh, we have a, 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 an approach on that. I have uh, compiled all the documents that I'm aware of that relate to this. They're on your sticks if you want to read them. You probably ought to, if you have some downtime uh, over the next couple of months, every, every member of the board ought to at least flip through those to know they're, they're out there. Uh, I took communication from Steve Grayson after I sent the letter that uh, went out, on, I guess it was Friday. He says, yes, we, you know, these are all the documents that these are all the agreements the county has with the rescue squad. So um, I guess one of the fears was there was something else out there that we, it was not in my file, but uh, that, that's a good first step. So once we um, pull our stuff together uh, internally, we'll be working with Mr. Jackson, Ms. Hoffman, having discussions with the rescue squad. Um, play there, you, you want to try to do that. August time frame, maybe. August, first couple weeks of August, we're going to start meeting. We'll, we'll, we'll meet next 
Insight on that. Yeah. I assume they knew it was coming. And we went back and they readjusted. Um, they were kind of been expecting. But now it's being very Yeah, he said, he said I, I, I thought that would be coming. So, oh, okay. yeah. He was so glad to get the 25 back. He didn't want to make yeah. anything else. I don't think. We understand that they are a vital part of our community. Um, we do need to, yep. and the narrative needs to expand a little bit. So, think about it. All right. Um, the, the free clinic, um, this has been a little bit of a moving target. Uh, I suppose the uh, free clinic is supposed to move on July 1, but the uh, I guess the latest communication was they to be out by the end of July. So what I thought I might do is just send them a letter confirming that, that that's that's what we expect. We just need to have a, a date certain on that. So just to be a little more formal then we're going to try. So when is their uh, health day? Saturday. Uh, um, it's a sad day though when that's our swag, but whatever. Is that the swag? Masks, oh. hand sanitizer, health related items. It's a pencil, looks good. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, anybody else got anything? To the public. Well, we've had a big group on there tonight watching us. I mean, it's been like the four of us sitting here in this room. Uh, that's, a, that's big on there. Vimeo, we got a whole lot of comments on the Vimeo. All slow of people. Hobbs is using his microphone tonight. We're all, thank you very much. Did you get a comment on that? No, no, we did not. I'm not making my own comment on that. That's very good. Did you have anybody? Oh, no, I didn't think so. Livingston's got two computers. I got one in Hobbinsville. That <laughs> uh, was the four of us on the other uh, They must be turning it up on YouTube. Well, they're uh, actually, <laughs> <I'm excited. laughs> yeah. um, All right. Anything else? Move to me. Yeah. Move to adjourn. Thank it. Okay, Zach, it's for the discussion. Yeah, so I turned on the YouTube.